entire staff call the meeting back to order. And I've been asked to add one thing to the agenda, and that's an in camera item, uh, 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 just an update on the fire contract. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Now, other than that, I'm on 11.4, I believe. 11.3? Yeah. Community development budget grant guidelines. Oh, yes. Yeah. So the topic of budgeted grants uh, has come up a, a few different times over the past year. Uh, initially, it came up uh, at, during budget deliberations, and uh, there was some discussion uh, at that time around uh, adding a, a new group to that list. Uh, in this particular case, it was a Chester Art Center. And so we, we did uh, put some funds in the budget just because we weren't sure how we were going to uh, handle that. So those funds were not distributed this year. Uh, and instead, it was referred to kind of our, uh, our budget discussion, or sorry, our uh, grant discussions that we've uh, had in the grant review that we conducted over over the past number of months. Uh, so we've kind of gone through that process. And so the, the budget of grants is the one kind of outstanding piece that we kind of really didn't come to any specific conclusion on exactly how we would proceed with that. So in the report, I uh, just kind of uh, provided a, a, a brief update on what is in the 23-24 budget currently. Um, just for a little bit of context so we can all recall what we currently have in the, as, a, as a budget of grant. And then also attached to that is uh, as a starting point for some discussions that council had asked for um, what we might include within some guidelines and in, in, in helping council to determine uh, who we may or may not want to include as a, as a budget of grant. And so uh, as a starting point, we um, have put together a, a few ideas for you, uh, just a couple of uh, just two pages, so it, it's very brief. It doesn't it doesn't solve um, necessarily the, the issue of determining a specific amount that council would want to include uh, as a budget or grant, but it, it at least gives um, a little bit of indication of who you may want to consider being included in, as a as a budget or grant. Um, so this is uh, some ideas to to bring back to council, and so I basically just want to open up the floor to to discussion. As you can do, do you want to go? Want to get sacrifice here, but I'm just going to post my ideas so Nandi don't get all creepy. <laughs> I'll say that publicly. No 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 anyway, I'm going to start out with Garrison. I had no problem with giving money to the IRS and all that, but I think we're sort of jumping the gun here because I've heard the players say that they would like to have a line out of money, and I know we start to develop policy on it, and I'm not sure we haven't jumped the gun to how we're going to distribute it out or deal with the different groups that come here looking for funding. And I do think we should support the play included with the arts. So I'm just not sure how we should deal with that. But I am going to make another suggestion that the three families, the resource centers, the New Ross, the Harvard, and the Chester one, that we give the line under five thousand dollars They are open now to get grants, large grants, small grants. I don't know why they're on there because they, they can certainly put in for any type of grants that they need. So that'd be my suggestion to be rid of them three. I really think we need to look at this, how we're going to do the funding for arts and culture and the policy, policy, whatever we're going to do with it. I think we're jumping the gun here. I'd hate to see this give them 25,000 and come back and maybe players once 10 or 15, maybe, maybe we should divide that up and how we're going to support. That, that's just my thought. Sharon, you had your hand up first. Well, I was just going to comment, and well, Floyd did, that the um, when the Playhouse did the presentation, they indicated that they'd like a line item. So I'm thinking, here we approve one, and you know, how do we give 125, and do we give another one 25 or 15? So we have to keep that in mind that the other organization quite clearly will be in asking for a line item. And I, I will say that, so I, I was approached by their executive director, Andrew Chandler, uh, to say that, that, that the players is interested and, and I essentially told them that they should just hold off a little bit until we develop our guidelines and then they would know more on what how to ask and like what mm -hmm. what's yeah. the process to ask and those types of things so the players is absolutely uh, interested in that and then so I think uh, what, what council struggling with here a little bit is um, what what are what's the scenario in which we would put somebody as a budgeted grant as opposed to just having them apply on a regular basis to any of our other grant streams. And so, so that's kind of the focus of, of where, what we're trying to, mm -hmm. to get at here today. Well, to make this, okay. well, Andre, go crazy. <laughs> now, so, um, 
Okay. So first of all, right now, you sort of can uh, make application and the only real requirement is that you're sort of a not for, for profit and that you meet certain minimum requirements. And one of the requirements that is not there is a demonstration that what you're doing actually is aligned with our mandate. Um, so for example, you know, childcare, is that, is that, is, really is that really our mandate or if, we're, if like, for example, our, our health center came in and said, you know, we want to be on there for $20,000. Is that our mandate to do health, um, you know, health care? I, you know, I, I think that that would be an interesting debate, but I personally don't think it is. Um, we have in, in particular the art center, which actually I think does line up, but we have, I've, I've talked about our sector strategy, 2014, all of the, uh, uh, you know, we've talked about supporting this sector for almost 10 years now. And, you know, um, you know, it came to council uh, six months ago or whenever it was, eight months ago. And it was like, we wanted them to come in and give a presentation. They came in, they gave a presentation, they demonstrated all the value they're providing throughout the entire municipality, still not enough information. Somebody else might come and ask for money. Well, I don't even see how that's relevant. You know, we're going to say nothing to the, we can't give you to the rink because somebody might come out and, and, uh, and ask for money. Of course not. I mean, they all have to stand on their own and it proved to us, I think that what they're asking for supports our mandate. That's crucial. And actually I think that should be a theme throughout all of our grants uh, that we're giving there should be a demonstration that the applicant is supporting our mandate yeah. and it, and not just fluffy stuff i mean something really concrete um i think chester art center is like the 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 pittance of the that's twenty five thousand dollars to support arts it's nothing and if if uh if 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 um if the playoffs comes in and they they want an additional 25 or more or whatever i you know i would have no problem supporting that you know the performing arts in that way because it's like it's 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 it, it defines the character of chester it helps define us and you know without that I mean, when it burned like it, the outcry was you know it was provincial um so i you know i'm i, I don't have i have no problem at least giving these guys the twenty five thousand dollars and i think they've done a very good job of demonstrating that they support our mandate yeah, yeah. So, so we did have some of these conversations when we were going through the review. And so with all of the updated uh, guidelines, uh, we did make sure that we included um, a question on all the applications or, or notify, notification in the guidelines that there needs to be uh, alignment with municipal uh, goals and strategic priorities that we have included in that. And so, and I think we did see that uh, within, for example, the, uh, the food bank, uh, they listed all of our goals and, and how their project was aligned with those. And so hopefully that we will see more of that uh, going going forward with uh, with future applications. Uh, so I guess the only, my only other, um, um, I guess, question here, uh, Andre. So in the, in the point number two in the guidelines, you said uh, the note is organization uh, that provides core public service and or who directly and significantly support the strategic priorities of the municipality. So that was a uh, Kind of a, another piece of criteria. So, is there something? No, no, I, I missed that. Okay, so yeah, so that, that 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 was kind of the second piece. So, it's either so any organizations that apply for a budget grant either need to have some type of formal agreement with the municipality, and so that would cover things like church moral parks. We have a formal agreement with them, and that's and, that, and that's how we provide funding to them. And the other piece would would be that that number two. Um, so and, and so I believe that that was some of the direction from before is that council with the budget of grant are really looking to support those core services that you know that really uh, hit at kind of what our municipal mandate is and, and their support of those. Yeah. The only the only thing I would say is, is with what Andre mentioned was that it has to be consistent with our responsibilities on that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that's a reasonable point to make them. And and yeah. The, the the healthcare and stuff like that. I mean, you know, we, we're not responsible for it. Well, we didn't give a grant to the Bridgewater Hospital for that reason. That's exactly true. And you know, I think that's uh, consistent. I agree with what Andre said. Yeah. Anyway, so so, so, uh, so, so, uh, yeah. so it kind of tweaked the number two to include some of that line. Yeah, I, I think it helps tweaked, helpful. I mean, you know, like, I mean, if, I mean, somehow we have to control control it somewhat. I mean, we really do. <clears throat> 
Now, in my mind, if I can just jump in for a moment, I feel like when we budget something, when we're something's important enough to us that we're budgeting it, it's almost in my mind, it's something that we're glad that there's a, like an outside organization that's providing that service because if it wasn't there, we have we, to we, we might be we might be able to, we might have something that would like a staff person that was like helping like the arts and culture sector or or putting work into that or or maybe we would be running the arena or whatever. Like to me, those are those are good um, sort of in your mind like fact checks of. Uh, whether this is a reasonable request. Yeah. Yeah. Tina, I think. Yeah, right now. Oh, okay, thank you. Um, just to uh, piggyback on some of the statements that have already been said, um, I certainly agree with um, the healthcare piece, the childcare piece, and that's why, especially when we looked at, um, in name only, those three organizations that are on that list. Uh, Chester, in terms around the resource center piece. So, Chester and Erie Family Resource Center, New Ross Family Resource Center, and through the years, Learning Center. I think that, and that would not be for me to say, uh, it would be for others in their own districts, um, but Chester and Erie Family Resource Center, and through the years, and Chad, you may know this, and obviously you're not going to speak to it if you don't know, but others can pipe up in those areas, those aren't resource centers. They might have been at one time. But they do not offer the services of a resource center. Again, others in those areas just pipe up. Um, I think that became clear when Mary Ellen maybe came in with her presentation. Um, it's uh, daycare and receives funding through the channels that daycares would receive funding. And I believe the Chester and Area Family Resource Center is the same. So I'll look to Sharon and Derek to pipe up there in terms of your familiarity with those facilities in your areas. I wouldn't have a clue really whether they do, but I assume just by hearing things in the media that all daycare centers receive funding. Yeah, now. which is not the New Ross Family Resource Center. Are there there's a new right? Ross, there's a new Ross daycare. They are separate okay. from okay. So Chad did hint at that when we were talking about it, when we were talking about the line items and the gray areas and the changing mandates with some of those organizations. And I'll admit I was here when we looked at that, those three at the time, and just to be kind of to be settling it, we, we identify that. But two of those three do not continue from today, from when we made that decision. Um, and I can be corrected. And there's a lot of people listening right now and I hope they're on the live stream and I can easily be corrected. And that's how I learn. Um, but I don't believe those two others of the three that, I, that are on there continue to do the resource center piece and they are funded through the daycare channels. Yeah, and I, I, I think that because I, I see where this is going. Yeah. Like, if, if, if they're going to make an application, if it is one of those organizations, they have to separate out the daycare sure. piece. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay. yeah. If they provide other services, yeah. that's one thing, but they have to separate that piece out because we don't fund that. So, so just to continue with some of my suggestion. Thank you. No problem. Um, so, um, Chad's comments around what would establish, or this wasn't your words, uh, what would establish or prompt an organization to be part of this list versus uh, doing a regular application, those discussions. Um, someone else said relevancy or direct alignment with um, the work that we do here. And most recently, uh, Andre's words, which I love, um, if if they weren't doing maybe the programming or the services that they were doing, whoever they might be, um, would we then be um, picking, it up. picking it up? And I will go back in history to mention around um, the work of the Family Resource Center in New Ross. And um, they've not been in here recently to do a presentation, but maybe they need to. Um, and hopefully we would give them the, the attention when they are presenting, which I know we do, um, to the details and the numbers and the stats and the programming that they do. I did share with you, uh, because they celebrated the anniversary of the year, Christmas time, the brochure. I just looked for my brochure on my desk row, but I don't have it. Um, so I think when we look at that, um, again, I, I would, yeah, I, that's all over now. I'm just I'm surprised. Derek, you had two questions, <clears throat> two items here. I, I know it must be history for kind of small edge, hardly $2,000. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And when we were off recent development for $90, it seemed to be proud to know. One of the reasons for that, Card Lake, we have an agreement with the province of Nova Scotia. 
you know, to you use their park and we, we look after certain things and they look after certain things because it's provincial park. <clears throat> and uh, the other one is because the bandstand or right. something. Correct. That, yeah, is, I forget. So on related, private land. Yes, it's yeah. related to the payment of the tax. And stuff so it's so just a tax break. Yeah. So that would have been, a, so again, in the back to the guidelines, uh, if there's a formal agreement with council or some kind of commitment through council Slater, motion, Slater, and so yeah. they would fit into that, 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 well, that topic of having yeah, we could We couldn't exempt them from taxes because it was on private property. Right. So, so I know they're yeah. district. Yeah. 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 Dave, Dave, second, yeah. Dave, second question. Yeah. Yeah. Daycare versus resource thing. Mm -hmm. What? Distinguishes one from the other. I yeah. mean, we all know what child care, daycare is okay. Correct. What makes it a resource then? So the, the difference would be those other services that that facility would provide to families. Okay, so what are those other services? So it would be so it could be a variety of things. So at one point in time, you know, um, uh, Tina had mentioned the uh, Chester Area Family Resource Center. So at one point in time, they had a youth center, for example, and so they were offering a variety of programs to youth uh, through their facility. They were doing some computer training. They were doing lots of different programs. Um, Tina could speak probably better than I could even on the on the New Ross Family Resource Center and the various programs that they would uh, offer to the to the community, whether it's like a foot care clinic for seniors or a, you know whatever those programs, the, the community Just kitchen look, look program, like those here. types of things. You know. Uh... Um, at home learning kids around activities for children, all that stuff. Um, walking club, uh, empower lady support group, uh, community cupboard. Um, that's uh, been really important. Like community pantry, community cupboard, um, seed kits. Um, again, available for uh, people wanting to get into teeny nurseries is, is very much a partner with that. Um, family food box program. That's just been phenomenally successful uh, where families are provided with um yeah but so and saying, i could go on yeah no need correct but, uh, you what i agree with what you said i mean we can ask them to break it down and i mean that makes sense mm -hmm. i'm not going to say that they don't provide the resource center definition let's ask them what they provide yeah. the reason i suggested those three i just want to mention because those three will be given the five thousand dollars a year, they were restricted. They were not allowed to put in for other grants. That's right. we've opened that up now. That's right. They can apply for any grant they want at any time. That's, that's what we've that done. That's done. So that's why I suggested they don't have to be a line item. They need to buy eligible, eligible for everything. They can be eligible for large grants, small grants. Thanks like for the clarification. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, that's, sorry, but uh, Andre has hand up. So just uh, two things. Uh, I'm looking at the list of uh, potential. And then we're talking about maybe deleting the resource or learning so whatever the daycare yeah, daycare style operations with maybe other services um i noticed church park we've increased that sixty thousand dollars in anticipation of a roof project uh is that just the thinking that that's going to continue on for like per in perpetuity after this roof project is done? No, so there will be some discussions uh, during our budget deliberations that are, are coming up, but essentially that request was, um, we, we are, as part of that agreement that we talked about uh, earlier, so we count this council has committed to $75,000 a year for the term of council. And so that, that number will not uh, change. Uh, I guess the difference is in this case, they've asked for additional funding for this fiscal year for yeah. that additional so $60,000. This so goes that, back, and the reason why I'm asking that is because part of the discussion that sort of prompted a lot of previous dis like discussion was when the art center was doing undertaking a capital project and then they wanted to get on the budget grant and then it somehow made them um, ineligible and you know I, I feel like this is kind of like a weird workaround that like there's no real reason to do it this way like if they have a capital project that makes sense and they're on our budgeted grant stream. But the budgeted grants are for like operational expenses. I think that maybe should be part of uh, part of the definition. So, the, but the only difference, so, there, so that's not true for everything. All right, so, lay it on me then. So, for Church Memorial Park, the seven, we give them seventy five thousand dollars. Fifty thousand is for operating. Twenty five thousand dollars for is for capital. So we were specific in our agreement with them, and that just in that, just with them. The other ones. Uh, Can you repeat what you just said there? So for Church Moral Park, we give them seventy-five thousand dollars, and we give them fifty thousand for operating and twenty-five thousand dollars for capital. Oh, okay. And out of that list, they're the only ones that we have specifically. And why do we do that? Uh, why do we care? 
Why do we care? That was part of council's discussion. Yeah. And, and, and when the park came in and, and let us know what they needed money for, uh, that is what council <laughs> agreed to at that time. Yeah, uh, but I mean, I guess all I'm saying is that to me, when I think about the, these are, these are um, in, in general, like community wheel, whatever, they're providing a service. And so when I think of that, it's not the community wheels comes in and they ask for well, like 11,500. It's not so they can buy a car. It's they, they, they have just a, they, they have expenses and they've got a long list of maybe they are buying a car, but they've got payments or whatever, but it's just thrown into the mix as revenue and they do what they have to do. And um, if there was some capital, <coughs> let's say community wheels, they need to build a garage or something like that, you know, they should be able to come and request, make a capital request. If it was a project we wanted to support, we should be able to do that separate from a budgeted thing because that makes sense. If it makes sense to us, we should be able to do that and, and to have it so that we just instead falsify the budgeted line thing for a year or two and then put it back down where it was. I just, it just, I, I don't know why we would do that. It just, it's, it's like fake policy. Um, and, and that all came about when we were talking Arts Center because we gave, it, them, a capital we gave them a capital thing and then we couldn't help them to operate that year. And it, it, didn't, it, it didn't, didn't make sense. And I hope that we can, if we're looking at policy around this, that we can, that we can get rid of that requirement because it just, it's, it's, it's senseless because we're just finding ways to fake out our own policy. So we have done that. So in, our, in the fall, we, we made a decision that if a group is uh, is on the budgeted grant list, that they are also eligible for our capital. And why are we putting this up sixty thousand dollars here in the? It is really not a capital project. It's it's a it's an engineering type. Well, that's part of it, though. Yeah, well, it, it really. Is. And so we would call it that if it was a sewer. And so, Andre, I, I guess I'll just go back a, a fiscal year or two. So the last time when. when uh, Church Mobile Park came in for some funding towards the water project that they were doing. Uh, at that point in time, they were not eligible for a budget grant and a capital grant. Right. And so this, and this is how it was. This is how so it was. That's how we dealt. With. So yes. That's, 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 I just think going forward, if we know that this is like for this year or whatever, let's let's be sensible and just call it what it is—a capital grant. I don't care which what way you call. And because it, it, it just, I, I think what it does is it sets a nice precedent. If we have other future ones, that it all can kind of fall into the same sequence. Well, now you are like. What? Yeah. Correct. Oh, you can't. Thank, thank you. So, just to go back to, um, to Floyd's comments, just before um, you mentioned about um, identifying the three family res the three resource centers and putting them um, as a budgeted uh, line item, um, and now they're eligible. They always were eligible. When I, when I first started here on council, I received in front of me uh, the list of council grant applications, and all oh, three of those organizations. Typically, every year, um, yeah, yeah, every year, not typically, every year they would apply and we would give deliberation. And then, for whatever reason, we kind of had a discussion around it and then just put them there, probably around the fact that what would establish or prompt an organization to be part of our, our line items, probably that. I hope it would be, and how it is relevant and direct alignment. I hope that's how we had the discussion at that time. But they always work. Eligible to apply for any of the or any of the, the grants. Only if they did not get by. Before we put them as a five. Oh, four because five. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, before yes. we put them as a five. Yeah. They always work. Yeah. So to right. say the expression, so now they're able to apply, it always was like that pre the budget line item. Correct, Chad? That's correct. Yes. correct. I agree. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, Andre. This is so fun. I know we're going to have a big fight at the end. <laughs> um, one thing I was thinking if we're talking about guidelines in general is that um, oftentimes like uh, groups will come in and they'll, let's say, let's say they think they need $10,000 at that time annually to help them. But as you know, they are providing a service that service lives on for many years. And the amount we give remains static, even though obviously costs everything in place. Do we want I mean, it seems like everything else we do here in this municipality indexes by CPI. We, why is it that we don't index these budgeted grants by CPI? Because it, 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 to me, it, it makes sense. You know, I know nobody wants to spend more money, but I mean, if we were giving the rink or the arena uh, $75,000 10 years ago, that $75,000 is like $60,000 now. Does that make sense to them? 
why, 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 why do we do that? So I guess what we have done to date is, is for the rink in particular, um, we asked the rink to give us an amount at the start of that uh, four year council cycle and to have them tell us what our amount is that they would like to receive for that for that four years. Um, and some of the other ones, so <clears throat> community wheels, for example, when they come in and did their presentation, it asked for additional funding because that's what their need is. So, so that is basically in the past, that's how it's been done. It's based on the group adjusted base and we've made adjustments. So we haven't made the adjustments, but uh, to, to your point, there's probably several different ways that, that we could do that. And otherwise others would, would stay stagnant um, and not change unless there was a request from the group, so. Okay, what do you want to do? Yeah, so I, so I guess that the, the, the outcome that we're looking for is, is these guidelines that, that were developed. Uh, so there was a suggestion to make some tweaks to uh, number two uh, to make sure mandate. that we include, yeah, that is part of the municipal responsibilities and mandate. Uh, so we can make that clarification. I guess, is, are there any other changes in here uh, that council would like to see it's moving just, forward? It's, moving. it's, it's better we had. <laughs> so was the intent to leave everyone on the list then? Well, so that, that's what well, I think well, that, I think you would notify the, the, the three resource centers that that's what we're looking for. To, to, you got to give me your notice, absolutely. And then when they do, if they do choose to apply again, they have to separate out the pieces that aren't within the municipal mandate. Can I just I think the intent for this was just to get the guidelines in place. And the who's on the list and how we apply those guidelines is part of what we'll do budget. in the budget. Oh, so that's what I just got to do. I mean, I'll just well, make it a while. I was thinking all our tenants would have at least 75. Hell, it might be lower. <laughs> just saying. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So you are going to see the, the budget of grants again when we go through the, the budget slide. You will see that, and that's when the amounts, uh, I guess, in some of the yeah, details. Uh, yeah, the, this conversation is really looking for final direction on the on the guidelines and, and whether or not there's any additional changes or additions. I feel really good to leave the guidelines with the minor adjustments, at least for a start for now. Okay. I will, I will say that when the prevent came in and they really tied the, the, made the linkage between what they were doing and what our, our priorities were, I, I, that was great. I liked that a lot. Oh, yeah, that's nice to have chemistry. Okay, Chad, that's good. Okay. Thank you. Okay, now we're in the Eleven point four, Fire Service Association, Development Director for Lumber Gang. That one should be quick. No, that's <laughs> something. Yeah. Good morning, Council. Good morning. Um, I just wanted to bring you up to date on the alternate director for Lunenburg County uh, for the Fire Services Association in Nova Scotia. Um, if you can remember, the uh, Chief Cody Stevens of the Chester uh, Volunteer Group uh, was appointed last year or in 2022 to be the alternate director for Lunenburg County, and that was approved by council. Uh, he's since taken on the position of second vice president for FSAN. And uh, according to their bylaws, he cannot be the alternate director and a second VP position. Um, so in accordance with their bylaws, um, we have a vacancy yeah. in that position at this present time. So uh, we went forward with uh, our procedure on a nomination <laughs> process uh, in accordance with our uh, written procedures, uh, seeking nominations to fill that uh, vacancy. Yeah. Uh, our procedure calls for us to go for nominations to each of the seven chiefs and uh, request nominations from them. So the nominations uh, were received uh, and compiled by the deadline of February the 10th. Uh, we received nominations from three of the seven chiefs. And then I went through and verified the eligibility of the nominee and also went to the nominee to see if they did request or accept the nomination. Uh, of the two persons nominated, uh, one declined the nomination, uh, leaving uh, Chief Clary Coolen of the Hoppers Fire Department as the sole eligible nominee. Uh, 
Um, we then went out to the uh, collection process of that, um, as our current procedure doesn't uh, specify the process of acclimation. So we decided, as in the past, we would go back out to the chiefs for the uh, for the uh, waxing process. Uh, so number of ballots were sent out to each of the seven chiefs uh, with a deadline of March the third, um, uh, established for their turn of votes. So at the end of the day, uh, March third, six of the seven fire chiefs returned their ballots. All votes were in favor of Clary, and uh, one department did not return a vote by the deadline, and that was counted as an extension. So my re, uh, my request this morning is that council approve Clary Coolen, Chief of the Hobbit Rubens Fire Department as FSAN's alternate director, and that a letter of support go to FSAN's uh, for that. You need a motion for that, Alan? Yeah. yeah, I do. Yeah. I have, I would like to, uh, a motion. Would you like me to read the motion? Yes, read it. Read it. <laughs> the council send a letter of support to the Fire Services Association of Nova Scotia, recommending Chief Clary Coolen of the Hubbard's Volunteer Fire Department represent the municipality of Chester as an alternate director for Lumenburg County at the Association for 2023. A letter of gratitude for past service with FSANS is to be sent to Chief Cody Stevens. And I'll make that a motion. Second. I'll check on that. Let me read it. No. <laughs> <laughs> Any further discussion? I mean, anybody wants to uh, object to this, now's the time. I'll put it in paper. Post motion scared. Thank you. Um, <laughs> okay, chip wood pellet to be. Well, the council. Thank you for your kind attention. Um, we were approached uh, by the Municipal Joint Services Board um, with a request to consider us accepting a special tip fee for um, uh, what, we, what, we, what we describe as, as dirty wood. Um, that, that's basically surface treated wood, such as paint that cannot be um, used as uh, you know, mulch or repurposed for sort of any other, any other services or, or um, purposes, I should say. Um, it does fall into the uh, the new construction and demolition debris guidelines, which were described a week or so back in, with the new changes from the Nova Scotia uh, environment uh, sort of regulations. Uh, MJSB has said that they will, they already sort the wood out anyway for us. So that's not a cost that we, or a resource that we would have to spend time with. Uh, they would also chip it and haul it to Kaiser Meadows. We would dispose of it in our um, C and D pile, um, and they're requesting that it be separated out from the normal uh, C and D uh, or general waste load at forty-eight dollars and seventy-nine cents. Um, so they're requesting that we accept twenty-five dollars per ton based on conforming or conforming to the new um, C and D regulations by the Nova Scotia uh, Environment Regulations, and also um, the reduced costs and, and time and efforts that we would because do it's check, because it's right. a sorted process. It also, with with it being smaller pieces, it, it compacts a lot better as well. So there's benefits to us in, in that uh, recommendation. And we've also um, liaised with Valley Waste, as you know, as a, as a partner of that, and they're in agreement with this as well. So we have a uh, in place. I'm sure you guys have done the math and all of you doing so. Anybody have any issues? Yeah, yeah. So, so if Joe Hogan comes to our landfill now mm -hmm. with dirty wood, just throw the man in the job, it just done the same way. How does that work? It would, it, well, if it's um, so currently, it would, it would go into um, the CD pile, but from July onwards, mm -hmm. um, with the new regs coming in, we would have the if, it, if it's just dirty wood, and I know that's a bit of a sort of a loose term, mm -hmm. um, but it would it would still go into the CMD pile, but it wouldn't be chipped. We'd get long planks, 
um, and it would take up a lot more volume. So compaction rates wouldn't be, wouldn't be as great around people. But, that, but that's a separate thing. This, okay, this yeah. is specific for the MJSB sure. because they are collect, collating it at their own mm -hmm. transfer station, they're chipping it and hauling it to us and separating it out. Okay. So this, what do we do that? Sorry, I was just um, curious. Um, so they're currently bringing their material to us? No. Correct. There. Yes. But, they, but they're going to pre-process this now. Yes. And we're going to get it in chipped form, yes. which is going to save us effort on our side. Correct. But the in, in the financial piece, it says this is an additional increase in $30,000 in revenue. Are they going to increase the volumes? Or? Because they're not bringing it to us. They, no, I don't mm -hmm. think they're currently bringing this material Correct. to us now. So, so they're bringing their garbage to us now. This is going to a private sector in Halifax. Correct. Oh, so it's an additional source. Of yeah. yeah. Okay. And Manny also highlighted in the report that one of the uh, prior to Brooklyn Energy, yes. uh, the material used to go there and it would be used to generate electricity. But I think that the stack on that facility was damaged in a storm and come up that plus with the change in the forestry with the uh, sawmills are now bringing the product to Brooklyn Energy. So, so this would be new material mm -hmm. for our site okay. and a new revenue source. In the description said that um, that they were delivering the non-chipped wood to us at 48.79 metric ton. But it was just, it was, it was lumped in with the general um, sort, of, sort of waste, if you will. Yeah. Oh, C and D pile. Right. No, not it separate out from the chip rock. All right. Well, anyways, it's uh, this is additional. It's additional. It, it's additional revenue. And it's clean. It's a sort of pre-process. Correct. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Do we have anything for chipping or anything on site? No. No, we don't we have that anything. facility. We're, we're looking into it, but we don't currently. Okay. Getting some training beams. Okay, sir, so are we comfortable taking that? Yeah, and just to one question Is this chipped wood used at all in the landfill, or it can't be? It has to be. It goes in the CD pile, so it's separate from the landfill. So it doesn't it doesn't take a volume in the, the landfill right. cell. It, it's a separate pile that's, that's uh, dealt with the, in, in its own. So what do we do with it? Yeah. Very problem. Well, yeah, it, it's compacted and then it's, it's buried over, over time. And it's when you see the pile is, is constructed and so yeah, on and so forth. Like okay. I, mean, I mean, clearly in the future, you know, when recycling and um, sort of repurposing of materials improves, we would absolutely look at those options, but currently we're limited somewhere. Yeah. Okay, motion to accept recommendation. So moved. Second. Second. Discussion. All those in favor? Opposed? Motions carried. Thank you. Okay. So in camera, train me. Go to the door. Okay. Let's see. Wait a second. This granting already did her yes. So um, that's the end of the public session. A motion to grant camera. We have one item. So moved. Second. 